Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Owning Your Personal Brand. I am your host, Amy Thompson, and I'm very excited for what we have in store today. One of the things that I always say is that everyone, every single person has a personal brand, and it's up to you to know that and to own your brand. And today we're going to talk to a wonderful friend of mine, Larry Long Jr., and he's going to share his journey into running his own business, motivating other people through speaking and coaching, but also how he has tackled personal branding over the past few years. And so please welcome Larry to our show. Hi, Larry. Wow. (laughs) Thank you for passing the mic, Amy. I'm happy to be here. And when you invited me, it just warmed my heart. So happy to be here owning your personal brand. Now you're talking my language. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Larry, take a moment or a few moments to please introduce yourself. I want to hear about your journey, not just what you're doing now, but kind of your journey on how you got to where you are right now. Oh, wee, where do I start? I got to pull up the platinum mic for that. But uh, my journey, Larry Long Jr., I'm currently the CEO, Chief Energy Officer of LLJR Enterprises. How did I get here? Well, when I was when I was younger, we moved around a lot. Alabama, Illinois, Nebraska, Pennsylvania, moved all around. My favorite song was Make New Friends But Keep the Old. One is silver while the other is gold. That really made me who I am today. I played baseball at University of Maryland. Go Terps. Had a lot of strikeouts in my career, but I learned from it. Had a lot of fun. Did some IT consulting wasn't passionate about it, moved to good old Rollywood, North Carolina, opened the Indoor Baseball Softball Academy, teaching youngsters the fundamentals of the game, but more importantly, the fundamentals of life. Ran out of cash, no more business, got into sales, making 150 cold calls a day to accounting firms. That was even more strikeouts than I had on the baseball field. But I learned from that experience and I just had a career in tech sales uh, as a tech sales professional, as a tech sales leader. And that's what's led me to what I do now. I'm a full time motivational speaker, uh, performance coach, sales trainer. I've got microphones to last a lifetime, but I just love having the opportunity to sow into and help build up uh, both people and their organizations. Good, good. Well, I appreciate that. And certainly uh, every time someone either hears you speak or or watches one of your videos, I know they're motivated in general, but also you provide some great tips as well. And so could you talk about when in your career did you realize the importance of personal branding? Oh, well, moving around a, a lot, and, and this is personally, I realized that there's a saying, it's not what you know. And most people will say, oh yeah, Larry, it's who you know. Well, survey says, nah, (laughs) it's not what you know. And it's not even who you know. It's who knows you and who trusts you and who believes in you. That really is the genesis of making things happen with relationships. So uh, when I was in middle school, I realized that I needed to make sure people knew me, they liked me, they trusted me. Same thing when I got to college at Maryland, I had the nickname of being the mayor of College Park because I knew people in student government, the Black Student Union, all the athletes, you name it, all around campus, the leaders, I knew people and they knew me. Now, professionally, those same skills transition and transfer. And it's still important for you to have a personal brand. And for me, I believe that being authentic is the best personal brand that anyone can have. Yeah. So I have absolutely borrowed slash stolen that phrase about it's who knows you more than any of those other things. All of those things are important. But it's who knows you that was I was talking to you earlier. One of the reasons I started to do this show, because that exposure is so important. People need to know you, but also what you do, how you help them, what value you bring. So I think that's important. The other thing you said that is really important is that that personal branding starts when you're young. You might not recognize it fully until you become an adult, but it really does start out when you're very, very young. And the faster and the sooner that you recognize that, the better Uh, I do want to ask a question. Interestingly enough, I also moved around a lot. So I I can relate to that of 
every couple of years, having to make new friends, how to make people like you real quick, but then you leave and go somewhere else and have to do it again. What about you? You have you have children, but I imagine they've been in the Raleigh area for a while. How do you talk to them though about those same lessons, but they might not have that same experience of having to do it? Yeah. So even without moving, there's transitions and there's relationships. My son just started fall baseball uh, yesterday. Uh, soccer. Uh, they just went back to school. So the importance of relationships and the importance of you shining through your true, authentic self. We just have the conversation. My daughter's eight. My son is 12. They're both going on 24. They think they're grown. But we have these conversations about the importance of really staying true to yourself. And we're we're noodling with the idea of a children's book. Who, who would have imagined uh, that the Long family would write a children's book? It, it, it's going to come to fruition at some point. Yeah. But we have those conversations and we talk about how are you actually employing that day in and day out? Are you making sure that your actions are showing care for others, that your actions are representing your brand? I can tell you my son has a reputation of being uh, energetic, talkative. I don't, he must get it from his mama. I don't know where he got that from, <laughs> but we're always working on making sure that we represent ourselves the way that we want to be perceived. Yeah, that's great. And then that is the exact same lesson for adults. And so, like I said, the earlier you learn it, the, the better prepared you'll be for college or for, for working. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about LinkedIn, one of your favorite places to be. And you are always on LinkedIn. How did you, a couple of questions here, you know, talk about why you enjoy LinkedIn so much, but also talk about how you, how you came to use it so consistently and authentically for your brand. Yeah, when I view LinkedIn, I view it as the biggest professional sandbox that's out there. It's it's such an amazing community. And just like any community, you get out of it what you put into it. So if I'm on the sidelines and I'm looking at it as a spectator sport, I'm going to get spectator sport results. But if I hop in and I join as a player in the game, as a contributor, and I'm in the mix amazing things are going to happen. Ding, 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 ding. LinkedIn has provided an opportunity and opportunities for amazing things to happen in my life. I can't pinpoint exactly when, because similar to most people, I originally got on LinkedIn as kind of like a resume, like, ah, I just put my resume on there. But eventually I started to see people are posting content. Mm -hmm. And I'm very rarely at a loss for words. So I said, I got an opinion. Let, <laughs> let me go ahead and jump in and, and share with them what I think about what mm -hmm. they're saying. Whether uh, whether it was good stuff, hey, keep going, or, uh-oh, I pity the fool. I, I don't agree there. <laughs> and in the mix. And then somehow I made the tran transition where I started contributing. And I do remember this. I was writing short-form content. And Ryan Walsh, who's the CEO of RepView, he said, Larry, do you have a, a calendar? Do you have a process? I said, nah, I just, whenever <laughs> something comes to my mind, I, I just throw it out there. He said, let me give you some advice. Go ahead and get some structure, get some process. Go ahead and analyze your post just so you can do better. When you know better, you do better. And lo and behold, he was correct. And then Morgan J. Ingram out of Atlanta said, Larry, I see your short form posts. They're OK. They're good. He said, but you have the opportunity to be great. You got to get on video. I said, nah, man, I, uh, I'm i not going to get on video. I got the face for radio. Rawr! I said, they're all going to laugh at me. He said, Larry, I hate to break it to you. They're already laughing at you. I'm going to tell you what my mentor told me. And he said, his mentor told him, if you don't do it, you're being selfish because it's all about you. And it's not all about you. He said, if you can impact and touch one life from you sharing your experiences, that's a job well done. And yeah. that was on a Friday when he shared that with me. The following Wednesday was episode number one of my, at the time I called it the midday, midweek motivational minute. And today yeah. we're doing episode number 123. Oh, wow. so that, was, that was 124 weeks ago. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I think that is, 
that is wonderful and very motivating. And I will share with you, you are one of the people who inspired me to do this show because I remember vividly you telling me that when you first started, you had to not care who was listening or not care who was watching. Just get the message out and get in a routine. And if you keep doing it, it'll become more natural. And then people, if you're giving good content, people will start to follow you. And so that is phenomenal. Over a hundred weeks of doing that. What, what, what would you say you've learned from those kind of where it feels like one-sided conversations when you're doing those videos, but what have you learned either about yourself or about your audience over that what two year period? Yeah. Well, I've learned that anything is possible. I, I never would have imagined I'd be on week 124. And, and as a result of my midweek, midday motivational minute, I wrote a book. My, my seven chapters of my book came from the my, my seven most meaningful topics uh, that I covered. And it was it, it's been amazing. I've also learned the power of community and finding your tribe. I realize I'm not for everyone. And that's OK. They say if you're for everyone, you're really for no one. Yeah. So I'm for those folks that appreciate <laughs> uh, a pink flamingo sunglasses and realize that, hey, we can be professional while we also have fun, because yeah. that's one thing that I won't compromise anymore is being my true, authentic self and having fun. I've done that. I, I put that mask on for too long in corporate America. Ain't nobody going to hold me down anymore, Amy. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the things you said, everything you said was good, but finding your tribe, I think is good because it does sometimes feel like you have to be this way. You have to be that way to be successful. And being yourself is actually the easiest thing, but it's also the best because you will over time find people who respond to you, who communicate like you, who enjoy your content, and then you build from there. And I think a lot of times go people try to say, I want that community or I want that audience, and then they try to be something to fit that. So I, I feel like finding your tribe, that's great. Building the community, that's great as well. So I appreciate that. Anything else that you would share about your experience? Because it has to be, you, you have over 30,000 followers on LinkedIn. So it has to be kind of a like, wow, this is really impressive. And you started before you started your own business. So you were doing that while you were working, you know, in corporate America. As you look back on that, I mean, what are some things that just kind of like, huh, I can't believe this. <laughs> How do you feel? All, all, all of it, I can't believe. <laughs> but it's, uh, I'm a social butterfly. And, and I love butterflying in person. Mm -hmm. But LinkedIn provides that reach. I've got friends. I spoke to a friend of mine yesterday who's in Germany. I've got friends in Hong Kong, Ireland, really every Australia, New Zealand, every every area of the world. I've got friends, India, Asia, Africa. I never would have imagined that. And, and when I do my live show, folks from around the world tune in. I'll never forget it was January 20th. This was year. This was two years ago. It was inauguration, and a gentleman from India said, "Larry, it's twelve o'clock on Wednesday. Where are you?" I said, "Well, hey, it's inauguration. I don't want to. I want to bust up uh, Biden and Kamala shine. I'm gonna come on a little bit later." He said, "Whoa, okay, I'll tune in." There. It. <laughs> it's, it's just it's humbling, really, to yeah. think about the reach as well as it's a responsibility to make sure that I continue to stay tr true to myself. And that that's something I'm committed to, that I'm going to continue being Larry Long Jr., genuine Larry Long Jr. This Larry Long Jr. that you see is the same Larry Long Jr. that my family sees, that my friends see. If you catch me on the golf course, I'm a little bit wild. I'm a little bit crazy. I like to have fun. I like to laugh. And that that's just, I can only be who I can be. And yeah. people can smell BS from a mile away. Whereas when you're being your true self, even if people don't like it, they can only respect it. Yeah. One other question about LinkedIn. When you mentioned a friend of yours that gave you the advice of being a bit more structured and kind of having a plan, how did you determine what you wanted to talk about? You know, how did you pinpoint that? That, that, was, that was a challenging one, but then it became not challenging. We have content that passes by our eyes every day. Mm -hmm. uh, just yesterday, I went to an event with NC State Entrepreneurs, the Andrews Launch Accelerator. That was an inspiring event. I snapped a couple of pictures that will probably be a post on Saturday, just spotlighting them 
and sharing my insights about what it meant to me to hear about these innovative ideas. Uh, my son and my daughter participate in activities. My daughter is gymnastics. There's a lesson there. I, I encourage people to just ask yourself questions of how do I feel about the current economic condition? Like what impact does that have for you? For me, the, the whole economic, yes, it's bad and it's an opportunity. Opportunity is knocking. Am I ready to answer that door? Yes. And I'm thinking ahead of how can I continue to accelerate? How can I grow? Who can I serve? So when it comes to content, it's really just being thoughtful, being mindful and being intentional to find there's content anywhere and everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good, good, good. So outside of LinkedIn, what other things do you do? Social media is very important, but it's certainly not the only thing. So what are some other tactical things that you can share that you do for your brand and for your business? Yeah, you got to, in the words of the great philosopher, Bob Marley, you got to get up and stand up and go somewhere. You, you've got to. So I've been involved with uh, Wake Med Foundation. It's a nonprofit that supports Wake Med hospitals. I've been involved. I'm on the board of Helios, which supports necessity driven entrepreneurs. There's countless network events. And now things are starting to open up. Mm -hmm. There's countless community events that everyone can be involved involved in, but a lot of folks make a decision not to. Yeah. I make a decision that I will. I will attend. I will support. I will be there. I will chip in wherever I can. So that, that's really my strategy. And my wife, she said, I used to wonder why you would go to all these happy hours and all these networking events. She said, I thought you just didn't want to spend time with me. But now, ding, 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 I get it. And now she's a part of the Wake Med Foundation. She's actually stepping into some leadership to really serve and support the Spanish speaking community. Like I said, everyone has their own tribe, their own community. It's an opportunity, but you have to take action. If you're on the sidelines, very rarely are things going to happen. But when you get in the mix and it might be uncomfortable, it's okay. That's where you grow. When you get comfortable with being uncomfortable, that's where your greatest growth can come from. And I found that's when the best things happen, when you put yourself out there. When it's a little scary and you're like, ah, should I stay or should I go? And you go, whoa, amazing. Yeah. And even if something amazing doesn't happen, it will build your confidence. Every time you step out there and do something a little bit different, it's going to make you more and more confident. So I appreciate that. Um, lastly, talk about advice that you would give. You know, people obviously are in all different situations, but talk about advice for someone who's looking to get started being more deliberate in building their brand. What are some things that they could apply? Kind of, you mentioned the person that said you need to do video, and the very next week you started doing it. So, what are things like that that people could apply right away? Yeah. I want to meet you wherever you are. So whether you're a newbie, whether you're experienced, here goes one place that you can start. There's conversations and dialogues already happening every day on LinkedIn. I encourage you to contribute. I encourage you to jump in and share your point of view, whether you agree, whether you respectfully have a different opinion, go ahead and take action. And, and you'll start to see that there's themes of things that you like, people that you really like, that's your tribe. So that's the first step is just hop into the conversations that are existing. The next step is you start the conversation. So you initiate what's on your mind. Uh, we're coming up on September 1 is tomorrow. We're coming tomorrow. up on the end of the year. What are your thoughts as you look forward to 2023? Who are you going to be in 2023? What are some of the top things that people should be thinking about when you initiate that? Other people will see it and they will hopefully chime in. And I just encourage you to not be discouraged if you put out posts and there's not a lot of folks. It takes time. I don't think anyone learned to ride a bike 
uh, their first time, you skinned your knees, you fell down, you had training wheels, but you got back up again. And that's what this is all about is trying and learning and loving uh, what you're doing and hopefully laughing and having a good time. That's, for me, it's it's twofold. I want to impact people's lives. I want to share value and knowledge. It's threefold. And I want to have fun. I want to have a good time. I want to learn different perspectives. I want to share my perspectives so that we can all continue to rise. Yeah. Good, good. I appreciate that. Well, Larry, we're going to wrap up and I really appreciate you being here and sharing your thoughts and, you know, to kind of recap a little bit. I think authenticity is something that came through with everything you talked about and consistency. Um, and I think I would add the third thing is you have to be what you said, comfortable with being uncomfortable because people might not latch in or, or listen in right away. They might not follow you right away, but if you are consistently doing something, they will eventually see it or the right people will eventually see it and, and connect with you. So I appreciate that. Before we go though, I want to give you an opportunity, you know, how can people connect with you and, and what are some of the ways that people can connect with you? Yeah. One of the best ways, follow me on LinkedIn, Larry Long Jr. I got the smile for a mile, face for radio. <laughs> I think I have the gold mic in my profile. You'll see me. You'll probably hear me before you see me. And then my website, Larry Long Jr. That's jr.com. I'd be, I'd be uh, privileged to connect with you. Anything that I can do to help, please let me know. Thank you so much, Amy. Yeah. Well, we're not done yet because I know in the mail, I got this nice little book called Jolt, and it's great. It's very Larry, and it's very inspirational. So tell people about this book that you wrote. Oh, goodness. It, it's um, I'm super proud of it. Just being able to impact lives. Jolt, get zapped into intentionality, rediscover, and believe in your inner greatness. You can find it on Amazon. I hope that it provides for you just a word of encouragement for you to step into that inner greatness that you, yes, you have inside of you. Let's go ahead and rise up. Perfect. Perfect. Well, Larry, thank you again. And I hope that you all enjoyed this episode of owning your personal brand. We will return next week with another episode and another great guest. So thank you so much for joining us and remember all of the things that Larry said as you hone in on owning your personal brand.